When working in DaVinci Resolve Fusion, you may find yourself doing some things over and over again. I'll show you how to save time by using macros to reduce those repetitive tasks down to a single step. I use arrows a lot to point things out on the screen. It's a bit of work to create one, and I'm sick of doing it. But I'll do it one last time and save it as a macro. Then it'll be like using a regular Fusion node. Insert it into the node tree, possibly set a few parameters in the inspector, and voila, done. Although I'm creating an arrow, you can use the same approach to create a macro out of anything you do in Fusion. Here are the nodes making up the arrow. They're all shape nodes. The S rectangle node is the arrow stem or shaft, and the S n-gon node is the arrowhead. I'll rename them the arrow stem and arrowhead so it's easier to follow along. Before creating the macro, you need to consider how you're going to use it. In this case, being an arrow, I'm going to need to move it around, change its angle, size, color, and opacity. So these are parameters I'd like to make available in the inspector. As it stands, to do all those things would require adjusting parameters for both the arrow stem and arrow head nodes. I'd like to set things up so I can make changes in one place only. Changing position, size, and angle can be simplified by adding a transform node after the S render node. Now, inspector settings for the transform node can be used to do all those things in one place. But if I want to adjust color or opacity, I still have to adjust both the arrow stem and arrowhead nodes separately. There are two ways I'm aware of to reduce that to one step, and one is better than the other. The less desirable way is to publish the opacity and color parameters of one node and connect the same parameters of the other node to them. So, for example, I can publish the opacity parameter of the arrow stem node and then connect the arrowhead node's opacity parameter to it. Now, adjusting opacity on the arrow stem node also adjusts the arrowhead node's opacity and vice versa. But what's wrong with that? For one thing, the opacity parameter of both nodes has been keyframed, which means you can't animate it. You're stuck. Another thing, if you were to double click on opacity in the inspector to reset it to its default value, you would also break the connection with the opacity parameter of the other node, so that adjusting it will only affect the one node and not both. This is far from ideal. The second and better way is to use a simple expression to connect the two parameters, which will avoid both these problems. One way to do it is by pick whipping. To connect the arrowhead node's opacity parameter to the arrow stem node's opacity parameter, first select the arrowhead node. In the inspector, click on the Style tab. The opacity setting is at the bottom. Click the thumbtack in the upper right. This will keep the inspector settings for the arrowhead node open even after selecting another node. Now select the arrow stem node. As you can see, the inspector controls for both nodes are visible. Click on the Style tab for the arrow stem node to reveal its opacity parameter. In the arrowhead node's opacity parameters edit field, replace the existing value with an equal sign. This opens the simple expression field with the pick whip control. Click drag on the control and bring the line up to the arrow stem node's opacity parameter. Now adjusting the arrow stem's opacity setting also adjusts the arrowhead node's opacity setting. To remove an expression, right click on the field and select Remove Expression from the menu. To connect the arrowhead node's color parameters, we'll use a different approach. Of course, you can still use pick whipping to do this. Replace the value in the arrowhead node's red edit field with an equal sign. In the simple expression field, type arrow stem dot red. Arrow stem is the name of the fusion node. Spelling in case has to match exactly or it won't work. Just as with pick whipping, this forms a connection with the arrow stem node's red parameter. Do the same for the remaining fields. Opacity and color for the entire arrow can now be controlled from one place, the arrow stem node. Now to create the macro, we need to select all the nodes needed to create the arrow. 
I will, as mentioned, be making some parameters available in the inspector. I'd like the parameters for the transform node, namely position, size, angle, etc., to appear at the top of the inspector. In order to make that happen, I need to select the transform node first. Next, holding down the command key, control key, and windows, I'll select the arrow stem node. It contains the opacity and color settings, which I'd like to appear under the transform settings in the inspector. Still holding down Command, Control, and Windows, I'll select the remaining nodes. Now, right-click on any selected node and select Macro Create Macro from the menu. At the very top in the Macro Name field, give your macro a name. I'll name this one Demo Arrow. Underneath that is a list of all the nodes that make up the arrow, in the order they were selected. At the top is the transform node. I'll place a check mark in all the parameters to be made available in the inspector. The names of the parameters can be changed into something more meaningful if you like. I'll collapse that and expand the arrow stem node to make the color and opacity parameters available in the inspector as well. The next step is to save it either as a macro or group. If saved as a macro, it will basically become a regular fusion node. That is, it'll be a black box, and you will not be able to access the original nodes to make changes or adjustments, but the macro will be available for easy access in the effects library. If saved as a group, however, you will be able to access the original nodes and make changes if needed. In all other respects, macros and groups are basically the same. Let's go ahead and save it as a macro for now. Click the Close button in the bottom right of the dialog box. Click Yes. Save it to one of the following locations, depending on your operating system. Click Save. If you exit and restart Resolve, you'll find a new macro in the Effects Library under Tools in the Macros category. I'll grab it and insert it into the Node tree. The inspector has all the parameters we made available. And as you can see, it's pretty much a regular fusion node. The macro can be edited by right-clicking anywhere in the node editor and selecting Edit Macro, and then selecting the macro from the submenu. To save your changes, click Close, and then click Yes. Now let's go back and save it as a group instead. Click on the three dots in the upper right corner of the dialog and choose Save as Group from the menu. It can be saved anywhere. If saved in the Macros directory, it'll be available in the Effects Library, just like a macro would. But for demonstration purposes, I'll save it somewhere else. Since it's not in the Effects Library, to load it into Fusion, drag it from the File Browser and drop it into the Node Editor. It looks pretty similar to a Fusion node. There are the parameters in the Inspector, just like when saved as a macro. To access the node structure, either double-click on the node or right-click and choose Expand Group. Changes can be made if needed. To collapse it into a single node again, click the small x in the upper left corner. So there you have it, a way to save yourself from doing the same thing over and over again. Boil it down to a single node by transforming it into a macro or group. Thank you for watching.